Hello and welcome to the Open Dental Post Conversion Insurance Overpayment Webinar. The first thing I'd like to go over is what Open Dental considers an insurance overpayment. So by definition, that's going to mean that the amount that you've received from the insurance carrier plus any uh, write-offs that you've taken these are going to be instances where the insurance payment amount plus the write-off amount is greater than the procedure fee. Ultimately, this can happen for multiple different reasons, but they'll need to be resolved manually. There are two main ways of identifying insurance overpayments. The first method of identifying insurance overpayments is going to be reports. So in reports and standard, down in the bottom left-hand section, we have uh, monthly reports. The two main reports here that you can use are going to be the insurance overpaid report and the procedures overpaid report. The insurance overpaid report can be ran for a date range depending on the dates of service. Keep in mind that any insurance overpayments that are resolved with adjustments will still remain on this report. The other option would be the procedures overpaid report, which can also be ran for a date range. You can also limit it for the patient that you're looking at, or if we click this all button, then you can see all of your patient accounts after we hit refresh. If you're specifically looking for insurance overpayments, you'll want to check this box to exclude if no insurance payment or write-off. Those are going to be the two best options for if you're trying to do practice-wide cleanup of those insurance overpayments, because these are going to look at your entire practice. The other way to identify insurance overpayments is going to be on particular family accounts. So if we head to the account module here for our first family, normally what I recommend is using the drop-down menu here and selecting income transfer. And if you hit this transfer button, you'll get a pop-up if there are any insurance overpayments and they'll be listed out for you as well. If this button's ever grayed out, that's also totally fine. There's another method of getting that list of insurance overpayments. That would involve clicking the payment button, entering a $0 payment, checking the none payment type at the top for income transfer, and then hitting the transfer button at the bottom that will result in the same pop-up that we were just talking about. And this is going to be useful a lot of the time because it will give you a breakdown of the totals for the procedures, as well as things like the service dates and how much each procedure is overpaid by, which can be vital. This isn't completely necessary, but like we talked about, this will not only give you the complete list of insurance overpayments on this family account, but it'll also make it a little bit easier once we get to actually resolving those insurance overpayments. So our first patient account here, we can start to look into how to resolve those insurance overpayments. So we'll go ahead and double click on the claim. It can also be useful to drag the window to the right a little bit just so that we can see the procedure breakdowns as well as the information on the claim. If we look at those breakdowns here, you can see that for each of the five procedures, insurance paid more than the fee for the procedure. So that's why they're coming up as insurance overpayments. Normally, this would be referred to as a true insurance overpayment, meaning that the insurance carrier just paid more than was needed for these procedures. Oftentimes, the carrier will either ask for a refund check or ask you to reallocate that overpayment to future claim payments. Another thing I'll point out here about this patient account is that it looks like there's an estimated credit. So whenever you have a negative estimated balance, that's going to refer to a credit towards the patient. Since that's a result, of the insurance overpayments, you can also enter in a pending payment up here in the top right hand corner if you want the overpayment to reflect onto the patient's account. So if we wanted to enter that pending payment, we can go ahead and click the insurance overpaid button in the top right corner of the claim window and you would just enter in how much they overpaid for each procedure. Okay. 
and we'll go ahead and hit save and save one more time. Now, if we're looking at the patient's balance, the estimated refund that we'll have to send to insurance is no longer looking like it's a credit on the patient's account. Once you do end up issuing the refund to the insurance carrier, you'll go ahead and double click back into the claim and hit the insurance overpaid button one more time. And then we'll hit this two supplemental button at the bottom. And just like any other insurance payment, you can either hit the this claim only button or you can do it as a batch if that's, uh, if that's what you need to do. On to our second example here. Just like before, if we want to get that list of insurance overpayments, we can enter that $0 payment, check none for the payment type, and then hit the transfer button. We'll go ahead and double click into the claim. So this is a little bit different than the first one that we looked at. If we look at the amount that insurance paid, it is actually less than the fees that we charged out for those procedures. Because you can see that the fees are going to total up to 227, while the amount that insurance paid is 157. So that might not necessarily be a true insurance overpayment. What's also going to credit towards the patient are going to be these write-offs. Typically, these are going to be determined by a contract or an agreement with your provider and the insurance carrier. So whether or not you're able to take these write-offs can depend on, on the situation that you're in. However, in terms of the program, those are still going to credit towards the patient. So if these write-offs were just entered to be a little bit too high, or maybe we made them match the EOB when we were supposed to make them a little bit less or that sort of thing, we can fix those with supplemental payments. So you would go ahead and highlight your procedures here and then hit supplemental. And in the write-off column here, you would go ahead and enter in a negative amount or however many write-offs you want to take off. Keep in mind that the order here might not always match what you have in the account module, and you can always reference that and or your list of overpayments from before. Starting from the top, that one's overpaid by $6. The bite wings are overpaid by $6 as well. The profis overpaid by $2, and then the fluorides overpaid by just $1. So there are the supplementals that we just entered. Since we haven't made any changes to the insurance payment column, we don't actually have to finalize this, and we can just save. If you did want to finalize it just so you could do something like attach it to an EOB, that's always totally fine too. You would just hit this claim only and it should just be a $0 check where you can attach an EOB. Moving on to the third patient account here. This one does look similar to the last account that we were looking at, but the main difference is that there's this positive adjustment here that isn't attached to any procedures. Normally, if you're able to, it's recommended to attach your adjustments to procedures whenever you're able to. For instance, if this was maybe five procedures that were built out with incorrect keys, we would always recommend putting those procedures onto the individual. Sorry, putting those adjustments onto the individual procedures rather than just having one adjustment here for all five of the procedures. If you look at the list of overpayments and total up how much each one is overpaid by, that's going to total up to the amount on the adjustment here. And that can also be an indicator that it might not necessarily be an issue with the account, but it might actually just be an issue with how things are attached or the allocations. So for instance, if this fluoride was meant to be billed out at $43 instead of $39, what you would do is either double click on the procedure and then hit the add new adjustment button, or you can click on the procedure and hit the adjustment button. Either way, it should show you that it's being attached to the procedure that we selected. 
you would enter in the amount on the adjustment. And then you would select one of your adjustment types here, depending on how you want it to show up on reports. And you would repeat that process for the remaining four procedures as well. So this one should have been billed out at $82, it looks like. Looks like the Pano should have been $119. So again, these numbers that we're entering can be gotten from that list of insurance overpayments from before. This one should have been $59. And the comp exam should have been just $80. So now after those positive adjustments are entered in, so as to resolve the insurance overpayments, after that point, you can always delete this previous adjustment or add a corresponding negative one to cancel this one out. So if we add an adjustment for $26, but select a subtraction type, this is preferable to deleting the original adjustment because they'll still cancel each other out because uh, you've got a positive $26 canceling out with a negative $26 adjustment. But keep in mind that this is typically going to be recommended because the date that the adjustment was originally entered is now technically historical financial information. And if you delete that, it can change the, uh, the way that your historical reports look. Moving on to patient number four here. This one is looking a little different. So it looks like what's happening is that we may have opted to give this patient some kind of a discount. Just like before, we can fix this with positive adjustments if we wanted to do so. Or again, depending on the situation or scenario that you find yourself in, you can also do negative supplemental write-offs, just depending on what the situation calls for. So if these discounts weren't supposed to be added in the first place, we would normally recommend just adding in corresponding positive ones to cancel them out like we did on the last patient. Or if the write-offs were supposed to be a little bit lower, that's when you can do the same thing, but with the insurance write-offs instead. So you would double click into the claim, highlight your procedures, and then hit the supplemental button. And you would do a negative amount by however much they're overpaid. On to example number five here. This one is a little tricky because it looks like there might not necessarily be anything wrong on this account. If we're looking at the procedure breakdowns, you'll notice that these four say that they have a patient portion, while the top one here looks like it has a large insurance payment and a write-off on there. So if we get our list, it should just be that one that's overpaid by a large amount. To resolve this, we would double click into the insurance claim. It looks like this may have been a workflow issue where the entire payment was entered onto that one procedure at the top rather than split between the, the five of them. So just like before, to fix this, we can highlight all five and then hit the supplemental button in the top right. If you're not sure what to enter first, you can kind of just start with the easiest parts of what we're entering. So what I want to do here is move the insurance payment to the other procedures. So what I might not be sure about is the negative amount that I want to put on that comp exam. What I am going to know in this situation is how much insurance income should be on these procedures. So for me personally, it might be a little bit easier to enter those positive amounts first. And the totals at the bottom of this window should also be another helpful indicator like that list of insurance overpayments that we were looking at. Because now I know that we can enter negative 263 on that top procedure to make it all balance out. And remember, since we're doing a reallocation here, a good way to double check your work is just to make sure that this amount at the bottom is zero. 
because we're not adding or removing any money or write-offs, we're just reallocating it to other procedures. And since we did actually move around some insurance income, what you'll want to do is hit the this claim only button on the on the claim. And just like before, if you had an EOB that you needed to scan in, you can always do that as well. So on to our last example here. It looks like just this one top procedure here that's overpaid. Just judging by the procedure breakdowns. It looks like it's overpaid by $13 there. And if we double click onto the insurance claim, this is going to be a little bit more commonly seen depending on the software that you're converting from. So you may see this or you may not see this at all, just depending on how your information converted. But what we have here at the top is the payment for this claim was entered as total. And what that effectively means is that it wasn't specified which procedures those are going to go to. So what Open Dental has done is that it's created these transfer line items here to move that money onto the actual procedures. So keep in mind that if we want to move or change anything on this claim, you might have to delete that transfer first. So if we double click on the transfer, any of these line items should bring us to the same window. You can double click on any of them and just hit the delete button. And that'll let you know it'll delete all of the transfers on this claim because they're all kind of just one. Now we've just got the total payment and then the four procedures. If you ever need to recreate those transfer procedures, all you have to do is go to the payment drop down and hit income transfer. And then without needing to hit the transfer button, just opening this window will have recreated those transfers for you. So if we double click on the claim, there they are. Just like our first example, it looks like this might just be a true insurance overpayment. So if we wanted to enter something like a pending overpayment, we can always enter that as well. If you need to add a total payment, keep in mind that you can only do this if in the family module, if the plan type is set to category percentage or a Medicaid plan type. You should also be able to do this for capitation plans, which are just a little bit less common. So if you have one of those plan types, you can double click back into the claim and then you would hit the as total button in the top right corner. So for instance, if we were doing something like a refund, you could enter that as well. Keep in mind that like we talked about at the beginning, insurance overpayments will stick around until they're actually resolved and they can cause issues like we were looking at on those various accounts, like the allocations being incorrect or looking incorrect. It can cause reports to not function as intended or expected. For instance, if you're looking at like an aging report or a patient portion uncollected report, anything that looks at the income that's on an individual procedure or those income breakdowns on the procedures can look a little incorrect, or it can result in the patient having an erroneous credit if something like the write-offs being too large is the situation that you're looking at. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have any additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos by subscribing to our channel and turning on notifications.